Petrov's defense, classical attack, Janus, Brown attack. Balanced neither player ever had an advantage. That game was pretty competitive. Both players had an amazing opening. It was an incredible middle game by both players. Sharp games are frequently the result of starting with the king's pawn since it dominates the center and frees up the bishop and queen on the light squares. A typical answer is e5, which builds a position in the middle, controls d4, and frees up the queen and bishop on the dark square. The move nf3 advances the knight toward the center, engages the e5 piece in combat, and sets up a castle. Petrov's defense immediately attacks white's unprotected e4 pawn, while ignoring black's unprotected e5 pawn. It is good. Nx e5 places the knight in the center, where it has influence over many crucial squares, and takes the undefended e5 pawn. It is ideal. d6 attacks the knight on e5 and allows the light squared bishop to develop. It is best. Nf3 returns the attack knight back to the f3 square, where it supports the d4 square and fights for the e5 square. It is best. Nx e4 captures the e4 pawn and places the knight in the center of the board, where it controls many important squares. It is best. d4 takes space in the center, controls the e5 and c5 squares and allows the dark squared bishop to develop. It is best. d5 takes space in the center, defends the knight on e4 and controls the c4 square. It is best. Bd3 develops the bishop, attacks the knight on e4 and prepares castling. It is best. And c6 develops the knight toward the center, attacks the d4 pawn and controls the e5 square. It is best. Castling gets the king to a safer square, out of the center of the board, while also developing a rook. Castling kingside tends to be safer because the king is further from the center. This develops a bishop off its starting square, getting it into the action. It is best. c4 takes space in the center, attacks the d5 pawn and prepares to develop the queen's knight behind the c pawn. It is excellent. And b4 attacks the bishop on d3. It is best. It is a fair deal after all captures. That's good. This keeps the material balance in check with good commerce. This exchange is fair. This defends a knight that was under attack and had no defenders. This is the only good move. The rook is now on an open file, which helps control squares across the board. This protects an underdefended knight that is under attack. This is the only move that works. It is the last book move. The best choice is this one. It is ideal. The bishop is now on a square that is more secure. It is ideal. This offers an equal trade of pieces. This is the only good move. It is a great move. After all captures, this is an equal trade. This is the only move that works. It is best. Recaptures. It is ideal. A pawn that was being attacked and had no defenses is now protected by this. It is ideal. What I would have advised is that. It is ideal. The king no longer has casting privileges. It is incorrect. This misses an opportunity to connect rooks. This permits the opponent to kick a knight. It is an inaccuracy. This strikes a rival knight. It is ideal. The knight is now sufficiently protected. It is ideal. This develops a rook off its starting square, getting it into the action. This is the only good move. It is a great move. The rooks can see each other now, allowing them to provide mutual defense. This threatens to reveal an attack on a queen while also checking the king. It is good. This blocks the attack on a pawn that could have been captured. This is the only move that works. This prevents the opponent from being able to win a queen. It is a great move. This maintains the balance in material with a good trade. It is best. Balanced neither player ever had an advantage. That game was pretty competitive. Both players had an amazing opening. It was an incredible middle game by both players.